Old Beats Me Ghost and Possible Me Ghost. My name is Taff316, and welcome back to another episode of Reading Your Comments, episode 199. And a special hello to you in the future who is currently watching this as the intro to the Reading Your Comments five year anniversary special. It is Sunday, or maybe Saturday, if you're watching this a day early on Patreon. For those of you who don't know, the Patreons have the option to watch these, as well as the reaction videos up to a day early, sometimes more. And get your name down below in the video description as well. Uh, regardless what day you're watching this, though, uh, on, regardless what day you're watching is on, though, that's what I tried to say, uh, let's go ahead and read some comments. Will you be returning to Bluestone 42 at any point? Yes, I have two more episodes of Request and a spoiler for something I have planned for January. For January, I plan on doing multiple ep I plan on doing a bunch of multiple episode reactions because I have some shows that I have multiple episodes of Requested, and I want to get a lot of those done in January. So, I can tell you right now, Bluestone 42 is planned for next month, yeah. I don't know how much Dad's Army you plan to do, plenty I hope, but like Flapper Ted, uh, the last episode must be last. I will keep that in mind, thank you. And speaking of more Dad's Army, that has a Christmas special, doesn't it? The William Shatner Have I Got News For You is surreal. Pretty much everything with William Shatner is surreal. <laughs> He's a weird dude. Laura has been positioned as the center of sanity in the British Empire of the opposite pole. You gotta think that's not gonna last long, though. I mean... One woman can only take so much. She's gonna snap. Arnold J. Rimmer or Gordon Brittis? I'm gonna have to give the advantage to Rimmer. I think they're both great characters, but if I had to choose, Rimmer. There are two words that never fail to send a wave of trepidation down my spine. Penalty and shootout. Good luck today, by the way. If England loses to America, we should just give up with football. Well, it was a draw, but I can confidently say we outplayed you, so I'm gonna take that as a moral victory. One Hub just buffers me all the time. I'm sorry to hear that. Majority reception to One Hub has been positive. And in fact, uh, I don't think I'm going to do VO anymore. I think I'm just going to go forward with just One Hub and Daily Motion. So the stuff I can put on Daily Motion, I will. The stuff I can't, I'll put on One Hub. In the original UK release of the Dairy Girls episode, Orla is dancing to Madonna's Like a Prayer for her routine. It was redubbed for copyright violations on Netflix, hence why the music's a bit out of sync. Yeah, I had the Netflix version. On the bright side, I didn't have to listen to Madonna. Wait, did you just say who eats bacon with a fork? I think you've learned something about non-Americans. Listen, if are we talking like the crispy like strip bacon, or are we talking like the circular bacon? Because if it's circular bacon, like ham-type circular bacon, then yeah. But if we're talking strip bacon, you eat strip bacon with a fork, that's weird. And I will not back down from that. That's weird. Both Jerry and James get treated badly, constantly mocked and bullied by everyone all the time, and the father-in-law is a horrible controlling bully. I hope Jerry stands up to his family in the next series, especially Joe. Yeah, I feel like Jerry gets it worse, too. And the reason it started to become annoying for me is he gets no comeback. Like, if you gotta pile on a character, that's one thing, but it should... You gotta give him something back, you know? Because if it's just completely one-sided over and over and over and over and over again, especially if that's a good character, a likable character, a character that's in the right, it starts to get really fucking annoying, so... He really needs a comeback. You should watch the full credits of the Benidorm Crimson special when you react to it next month. Okay, he's got like a post credit thing, like the end of series two. I'll keep that in mind, thank you. Seen Benidorm loads, never consider that this could be the end of the show. Great thought. I mean, it felt like it to me, didn't it? The end of series three, they were doing that singing montage and they were saying goodbye to all the characters getting on the plane and stuff. Just the way it was presented, it's just like, wow, that absolutely could have ended the show. I just found out they're bringing Benidorm back after axing it a few years back. That never happens in England. Now all we need to do is for Channel 4 to bring back UK Shameless. I miss that show uh, like a long lost lover. Well, they're bringing back UK Gladiators, so fair enough. But apparently the Benidorm thing is a rumor. Like they teased it at Benidorm Con or whatever, but I don't think it's confirmed confirmed yet. I managed to get tickets for Peter Cave's tour next year. Can't wait uh, for it. It will probably be his final tour. Could be. Yeah, it's going to be a long end again. He's got shows for till 2025, so if it is his last tour, he's at least going for a bit. Some other things Peter K has done, according to Wikipedia, Coronation Street, like you mentioned, in 97 for about 20 seconds, and 20, 2004, the one I requested. Roy had a racing car, I believe it's his only animated show credit. Mrs. Brown's Boys, uh, episode Good Morning Mrs. Brown, and other stuff he makes cameos in. I don't think we'll be doing a Mrs. Brown's Boy episode. Uh, Roy had a racing car, who knows, and like Yoshi just mentioned, he requested the 04 Coronation Street episode, so we'll be doing that at some point. 
Airport security changed, yes, pre-9-11 people could not walk further into airports to view planes uh, or wave people off. More armed police uh, walk around airports, uh, keeping in mind police don't walk around about regular streets, streets and cities with guns. Yeah, you know, I, I just, when he was talking about that, it, it uh, just piqued my interest, because I obviously airport security changed tremendously here, but it's interesting to think about how it may have changed the rest of the world too with 9-11. Peter is performing in a circus building, one of the oldest in the world and one of the only three that can f uh, flood it stage. Uh, and it's not at the top of the tower, he's at the legs of the tower. What? He wasn't even at the top of the tower? I've been fucking betrayed. 10k views, let's go. Yeah, that Peter K video uh, hit 10k views in like a week, which is like my newest video, my first new video to hit 10k views since the young ones, I think. <laughs> I can't watch Peter Case stand up, but not because the material isn't good. It's not Jack D, but it's okay. But it's the audience. They laugh hysterically at everything he says that drives me mad. Dude could walk on stage and say, I'm wearing shoes, and the audience will wet themselves laughing. You know, I, I do agree with you, but ironically, you commented on... You wrote that comment on the one special where that's not really the case at all. Haha, I'm missing reactions to bad education. I take it that means the Christmas episode is a candidate for Christmas month. It's gonna happen this month. Yeah, it's the whole reason I did the whole second series. One of the benefits of Jack Whitehall being a DDB fan is he fits the occasional reference in. Yeah, he's just a wrestling fan. I mean, I believe he actually was, I remember he was on like the first ever AEW show and he actually helped present their fucking belt <laughs> when they unveiled it. When Wolf shoved Eureka, bro, I did not see that coming at all. I wonder if he let her in on it beforehand. I, I don't I don't know if he did or not, but he, he shoved her hard, dude. Can't comment too much on this given I only saw the Australian Gladiators not too long ago. Uh, that being said, I get a feeling these contenders, at least the men, scored low on a tryout so they put the Gladiators in their weaker events and just wanted to give them a bit of hope. Uh, Aussies were latecomers on the scene, but we brought the best of the Glad and Glad rivalry between Wolf and our Gladiator Vulcan uh, in the most arrogant prick competition. Vulcan, who was a wrestler, uh, John Siru, uh, joined as a guest gladiator in 97 series at the Australian series, uh, was cancelled after three series. Prior to him becoming a henchman in the Bond film, The World Is Not Enough. Okay, can we back up to the beginning here? There was an Australian gladiators? Shit. Thanks for fulfilling my request, quite possibly my all-time favorite murder mystery series, where the how of the murder is just interesting, if not so more so as to who. I don't know if there's any slots left for December, but there is a Jonathan Creek Christmas special between series 2 and 3 called Black Canary, which doesn't spoil any previous episodes and guest stars Rick Mail. Not a spoiler's name, it shows up on screen right away, just thought I'd throw that there for consideration. I am considering it, but can I really skip the first two series to do that special? If I can, then fair enough, but I don't know. I did not say that coming is a phrase you'll find yourself using many more times if you continue for line of duty. Yeah, I mean, by all accounts from what I've heard, it seems like we're just getting started. It seems like there's a lot more crazy shit to come. Hey, did you point out the camera in line of duty? I never noticed it until you said it and that's all I can see. I'm sorry, but like, why did they film it like that? Like, why did they film the camera constantly shaking? It's fucking annoying. Just hold the thing still. Nah, I hate the bit with the horses on the last episode of Gordon, Gino, and Fred. I don't know if I'm being sensitive, it's a bit cruel. They clearly don't want some Texas donkey to be on them. You know what I mean? Like a bright light and the noise is all for entertainment of the humans. I agree with you about Texas. I don't know, uh, I don't know. I feel like Gordon is a bit more patriotic about America than his own country. A lot of Brits, especially Scots, don't like him because he feels very Americanized. Uh, at the same time, though a lot of Brits love him, he's ultra pro-American uh, with doing that kind of anti-Europe. Texas is a fucking weird one. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with you about the horse thing, by the way, but I, I think I, I think it's fair that, that Gordon's playing into what he has to, you know, because he's huge here. He's huge here. I mean, to be brutally honest, nobody here in America really knows who Gino and Fred are. When they showed that series in America, they actually retitled it Gordon Ramsay's American Road Trip. <laughs> they took Gino and Fred out of the title. <laughs> um, but... Because no, because they don't have any marketability here, unfortunately. People don't know who they are, but everyone knows who Gordon Ramsay is. He's got a huge audience here. He's got like five different fucking shows. Uh, he's got all his billboards in Las Vegas, you saw. So he probably has become Americanized, yeah, because he's, he's got to play into his audience. I still haven't gotten over the awkwardness of watching episode 2 of Torchwood with my entire family. Yeah, that was quite a plot to do that early. Like, that seemed more like an episode, like seven or eight type plot you know something you throw in near the middle or something that that was a hell of a plot an alien that kills people with orgasms to do in the second episode 
I remember watching the first series of Torchwood and it felt like they had some serious issues with character development, hence the multiple retcons. The rest of Torchwood does indeed get a lot better, the five part final series and uh, in other words, series two and three are worth doing. I hope so, man, because that first series just frustrated the hell out of me. Like, I fucking, what was his name? Owen was awful. Like, he, he was just, I, I think I said it out loud at one point. I'm pretty sure I did, but it's like, was I supposed to like that character? There's no way I was supposed to like that character. Because how how could anybody like that character? I just don't get it. The butler guy was alright, but honestly, I don't get why they fucking kept him around. I think that offense he committed with the Cyberwoman gimmick was more than enough justification to fucking memory wipe him and send him on his way. So I, I was shocked he was getting... I guess you could argue that his punishment was being kept around. I, I, if that's if that's the explanation, then fair enough, honestly. But I, I think it was more than justified uh, in wiping his memory. Jack was morally corrupt too, but at least he was right most of the time. You know, he had a lot of good points. It was brutally right, but he was still right. And the one I was most disappointed in was Gwen, because it looked like at first she was going to be a good character, and it turns out, no, she's just fucking awful. Like, that shit where she, she, she cheats on her boyfriend, she tells him, and then she memory wipes him? Like, are you fucking kidding me? I was so incredibly disappointed with her, the more that series. The more that series went on, I became more and more disappointed with her. The only character I liked was Tosh, and they barely used her. There was two episodes in a row where she had like a combined two lines, and she was the only good character. So, yeah, and to top it all off, I didn't even mention this, but the fucking, the ending, the ending with the fucking... Azrael, whatever it was, that it was supposed to be the climax of the show, the big CGI fucking thing, was in the show for like two minutes and then Jack absorbed it or whatever and then it was gone. That was it. It's like that's what we were building to? Some big ass CGI motherfucker who's there for two minutes and then gone completely and never mentioned again? Like, that. that I, I hope to God that you're right that the second series is going to be better because that show frustrated the fuck out of me. Oh, and also, I'm not done. I sat for that whole series because I was supposed to be connected to Doctor Who last three episodes, and I was supposed to get some lore information. Didn't get that much, and then, in fucking, in Utopia, in Doctor Who, Jack did a lore dump, and in 90 seconds, he explained more about himself than he did in 13 fucking episodes of Torchwood. This Torchwood upload has to be the most impressive one you've done so far. Despite my frustrations with the show, I'm proud of it. Uploading 13 episodes at once, yeah, I'll take that as my most impressive upload, absolutely. I'm so happy you didn't get spoiled on our special guest on Doctor Who. The reveal was amazing just because of your history on the channel. Yeah, that was awesome. S Sam fucking Tyler, huh? I, I like, I, I, I could not believe it. He was great, too. Like, I don't know if I, I really went into his performance during the reaction, but he was great. He did such an incredible job. I had to stop my plans when he uploaded one of my favorite stories. I had to skip the end of Utopia to see your reaction to Sam Tyler being the master. I'm so glad uh, you watched the movie so you knew who the master was. You know what's funny? When I did the movie, there was some uh, mixed opinions about me doing it because some people said, I don't know if you should have seen the master already or maybe that's a bad idea. But ultimately, I, I agree. I think it was good that I did know who he was. Because it enhanced the moment. You know, like... Instead of me just saying, and if I hadn't seen the movie, I would have been like, the master, who the fuck's the master? I still would have marked out for Sam Tyler, but I would have been like, who the fuck is the master, you know? But having seen the movie, I understood the gratitude, or the gratitude, the, um, not the gratitude, the, uh, gravity, the gravity of that moment. How often do you expect each series of Doctor Who will be uploaded every couple months longer? Here's what I'm thinking right now. This is not set in stone, but right now I'm thinking... I do Series 1 of Sarah Jane Adventures in January, I do Series 2 of Torchwood in February, and I do Series 4 of Doctor Who in March. That's not set in stone, but currently that's what I'm thinking. With the last 12 years of Tory bullshit, I'll happily take Saxton as the Prime Minister. Maybe he can host Have I Got News for you. Peter Serafinowicz Show was a tremendous start to this Christmas month, that was one of my favorite episodes overall. I agree, and I'm, I'm glad I was able to give that show a, a send off like that because again it was something clearly very undervalued uh, by the BBC and I, I enjoyed it a lot so I'm very happy I was able to give it that spot. This Christmas is going to be the best ever. I hope so buddy. Honestly I have some really fun stuff 
uh, planned. And by the end of it all, I think this could be my best Christmas month. Please write the Line of Duty Christmas special. You know I would if that was a thing that existed, but to my knowledge, it does not. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for another episode of Reading Your Comments. You may have noticed this episode was a bit longer and that there was a lot more comments. That's because, because last week I did the anniversary special, uh, I pulled comments from the last two weeks in this video. So the comments in this video were pulled from the following videos. You ready? Reading Your Comments 198, American Rex of British Empire 8, Managing England the Impossible Job, Dairy Girls 5 and 6, Benadorm 21, Peter K. Life at the Top of the Tower, Bad Education, a complete second series, UK Gladiator Series 2 number 4, Jonathan Creek, Line Duty 4 and 5, uh, Gordon Gino and Fred American Road Trip 2, 3, and 4, Torchwood the complete first series, Doctor Who 39, 40, and 41, and the Peter Serafinowicz Show 7. If you want a chance to get your comment read in episode 200 next week, episode 200 of Reading Your Comments, the co videos to comment on are as followed. Uh, as follows. This video, the reaction video that comes out, came out yesterday, which was Games Master, the reaction video that comes out tomorrow, aha, uh -huh, and the one that comes out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Those are the videos to comment on if you want a chance to get your comment read next week in episode 200 of Reading Your Comments. But that is going to do it for episode 199. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. If you didn't like it, don't. If you want to follow any of my social media links, my Twitch, where I stream every single day, my second channel, Free 16 Views, my Twitter. If you want to follow me on my Patreon, if you want to support me on my daily motion, all things are in the video description down below, as well as the Twitch Fods channel and the community Reddit. Speaking of Free 16 Views, by the way, uh, schedule for that should be posted probably tomorrow. That'd be my guess. Uh, also, uh, if you didn't know, if you're a patron of me, you, which you can be for as low as one dollar, one pound, you get your name in the video description, and also you get access to direction videos up to a day early, sometimes more. With all that being said, though, my name is Noah Taff. This has been episode 199 of Reading Your Comments. We'll see you back next week for episode 200. And yep, yeah, see you there. Bye, guys.